please be in focus, please, please, please. All right. I've been procrastinating on making the video about this cape for like a long time and I had a hard time figuring out why and I think I finally drilled down to the answer. It's because it's not actually about this cape. This video is actually about the buttons. So I was planning to make this cape pattern, which I've never made before, as like a wearable mock-up. Um, this is just a cuddle dud sheep I got from the thrift store and I was like, oh, kind of a lighter weight cape. We'll do a little test and see if this feels good gender-wise. But then, as I was making it, I realized, oh no, what if I was extra? So, happy Pride Month, darlings. Please enjoy this video in which I hand make 10 enameled copper buttons. <laughs> so the process I decided on to make the necessary 10 buttons for this cape was to enamel a hand-cut copper disc. Lots of cultures have been doing enamel work in various forms for ages and ages, and you might recognize it in poisoning beads or enamel faces all, all across the globe. People have been fusing glass to metal, uh, but your your embry had never fused glass to metal before, so a test button was in order. So the first step is to create the base piece of copper I'll be using for the button. I cut this out with a handsaw, and then I punched two holes for the buttonholes. With that out of the way, I start the process of adding the enamel to the button. The technique I'm using is called wet pack. It's when you apply a powdered enamel while it's still wet and then remove moisture afterwards. This way of doing it means you can kind of paint it on with a paintbrush, which means it's much more easy to control the design. It does mean you have to do this final step, which is you have to wick away as much of the water that you left as possible with like a piece of rolled tissue or toilet paper because any water in high heat in the kiln is gonna be dramatic. It's gonna like sort of explode and pop and fizzle and rapidly evaporate. And that level of drama is not the goal. The copper button is then fired in a kiln at 760 degrees Celsius, which in Fahrenheit is hot, um, but also known as like 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it's very hot. <laughs> so it gets a little lava bath for 45 seconds, which is pretty brief. And in those 45 seconds, the glass melts and fuses to the metal below it. It's basically magic, and it like is totally cool that you can just do this. Like it totally blew my mind that this was not only something I could do, but actually wasn't that hard. So the trick to enamel is multiple thin layers, because if you add too much enamel on at a time, it's prone to cracking. 
So you have to go one little bit at a time and just repeat the process. So I repeated this process twice more and I also added a layer of clear glass powder on top as the final step to make sure it was glossy and even. So all told, this trial button has four layers of glass on it. The end product, which is not perfect, is definitely enough of a success that I felt confident moving forward. So the process for making the final buttons, the actual 10 buttons that I need for the cloak, is essentially the same. Only more. 10 of them. I made some design changes as well because I learned some things along the process of making the test button, but overall it's pretty much the same. I hand cut out all 10 blanks. Then I sanded them and filed them to the shape, which was a bit of a to-do, but I got there. And all in all, I was pleased with the outcome of my 10 little discs. For the holes, I decided to punch four holes instead of two. And here's where the initial boo-boos start to get made. So the drilling was not my best work. I knew I ought to pre-tap where I would be drilling, but I didn't, and I don't really have a good reason why. I just didn't. I think I was in a rush and I just wanted to do it, and I was like, well, maybe it'll work out fine this time. And the answer is no. Uh, you should pre-tap where you are gonna drill. Uh, so they look, shall we say, unique? They have a, <clears throat> a homemade charm? I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty frustrated with myself to the point where I had to like take a couple days and just like not look at them. But I decided in the end I didn't need to remake them, it was gonna be fine, it's just one part of the button and it was gonna be a busy enough button design that like probably people wouldn't be paying high attention to the quality of the drilling in the button holes. So finally I allowed myself that life would go on. So while I kept the size and the shape of the buttons the same, I did decide to dome them so they weren't all flat. I use this, it's called a little dapper, it's just basically a metal inverse dome and it's quite heavy steel and then you place it in there and then you give it a little whack with a hammer and you just go boop 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 and it's domed. I was definitely being a bit perfectionist and I'm glad that I moved forward because the point of the project is to learn and have fun and make something really gay and delightful. If the thread holes in the buttons are a little off, it's not going to be a huge deal. People aren't going to notice and life will go on. 
To be clear, it did take me several days of moping to get there, but we did. And that leaves us the fun part. Enamel! I did them in batches of three and four because that was the maximum number of them that could fit in the kiln in just one time. That means I could do some efficiency in my application, which was a big time saver. Just like before, I applied a thin layer of powdered glass while it was wet, and then wicked off the moisture and then fired them. And then I did it again. And again. The process was not seamless. I ran into an issue where the white enamel in particular cracked on four of the six buttons I made, even when I used counter enamel on the reverse side of the button. The white was not happy. Um, so it did crack on four of them, and I'm thinking maybe it was meant to be fired at a different heat than the other enamels, but I don't really know for sure. I had some repair work to do on those then, which was a little bit frustrating, but that was okay. And here's the result. I'm really happy with it. proud of what I did. This opens up so many projects in the future. I don't know what I could do next, but I could do something and it could be cool. There are definitely some lessons learned for next time. This is like early days of knowing how metal works, how enamel works, all of these things. It's always a learning process. Even with those lessons learned, I'm really happy with it. I think it worked really well. I'm also a big fan of the cape itself. I wasn't sure if it would feel too feminine. I like personally kind of riding the middle road between like gender expressions. Um, but that does limit me a little bit, and I wasn't sure how it would feel, but the answer is, I feel like a boss. I like it. There are some tweaks I'll make to the pattern next time. It was clearly designed for someone a little bit taller, and maybe with a little bit longer of limbs, but other than that, I think it's pretty much good to go as is. And I'm gonna tell you, there is nothing more delightful than riding a bicycle and having your cape, like, flap around you. It's really quite fun. I like it a lot. In terms of expenditure, this is where it's gonna get a little bit fuzzy. I know that I spent $15 on the tissue paper pattern. I paid for shipping. I don't know. I wanted it. Whatever. Um, and I know I spent $4 on this fabric because it was a sheet. Um, a really fuzzy sheet. It's really soft. I have no idea how much I spent making the buttons. And part of that is because the cost is wrapped up in the fee to be part of the makerspace. So like using their kiln, using all of their like tools. I... I don't know. I don't know how to like drill that down into the two actual like per hour fee. I paid for the copper of the buttons, but I used leftover old enamel that they had sitting in the shop from someone else's project. So I really don't know. I really have no idea how to turn that into a number for budgeting purposes. Um, so I spent probably at least $20, but probably less than $50. <laughs> I don't know. I tried. I'm sorry. I like to be transparent in costs, but sometimes things are just a little bit mysterious. So I guess the real question you might be asking yourself now is, well, this is, in theory, tangentially, a project that was about a cape. Will there be more non-sewing related projects in the future? And the answer is definitely yes. So I hope that you were willing to like come along with me as my journeys shift and change, but like I am a person who likes to follow the whims, you know? If something is exciting, I wanna do it. And I think part of the reason I procrastinated so long on making this video is that I was nervous that you guys wouldn't be interested in coming along with me on that journey. And I would love some reassurance that you are in fact gung-ho for like whatever weird stuff I end up making. Um, is that a little bit selfish of me? Yes. But you know what? We're all human. Go have a happy pride. Go be queer and make stuff. Enjoy the summer. I like you all. Thanks for being here with me and I'll see you next time. Bye!